I want to do that. Welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to see if I can manage to play a game of relay chess. I know that's a really lofty aspiration, but you know we had to start somewhere. So while that's going in the background, um, I'm gonna see if I can. Okay, I can't. I need to open another browser here to try to do this. Um, I can't have two Leeches logins under the same browser on this particular uh, thing here. So why don't I try logging in another way? Um, I wonder. Uh, maybe, okay, let's try that. And then hop over to uh, our favorite site. <laughs> I forgot, this is actually located at um, relaychess.moo.com. It's a really super official domain name. Um, okay, so have I gotten logged in twice here? Yes. Perfect. So, assuming I request a new game, that does show up correctly. Or two for two. I really don't expect us to do any better than that. But um, so when I click on this, um, yeah, this went straight to heck in a handbasket. Uh, the game should auto abort, but also we should not be in this state to begin with. So something goofed up in the server side code. Um, and it's my task to figure out what went wrong and fix it. <laughs> Isn't programming exciting? So... I th oh, I'm sorry, that doesn't sort it by most recent now, does it? I did recently update the uh, service descriptor file although locally I'd um, modified it anyway for this particular installation now I've configured it so everybody can use my default production configuration for the service configuration file that is if you're using this consumed by system D um, now it waits for the network online target as well as a couple other things um, which it was already waiting for and it uses the user of relay as opposed to the previous username it was using, which honestly um, was just an artifact from uh, my earliest installation. So um, it would help if I could remember where the log goes. Because um, there is a log here somewhere. Oh, actually, here's my log journal.sh. Oh, and that's even today's date right there. Alright, name.starts with is not a function. Kaboom. Um, so, what have I locally changed? I'm locally setting some more cookies not just a real HS session ID, but a leechs user ID and a leechs username. And the idea is I was going to try to get the button to auto hide and auto show. Uh, but somebody more recently alerted me to the fact that um, the site just doesn't work for playing the game. If both players are logged in, you can actually get this screen and no farther. Um, so it looks like I haven't locally changed anything which could directly cause that. Um, which is to say that this bug exists and it's a function of um, uh, just my poor coding. So I need to go to function utils, get database user by name, 
see what its precondition is for the parameters passed into the function and see if it's responsible for this bug or um, if what called it failed to provide the necessary parameters. Um, so let's do that. Um, let's see, home relay relay chess socket server utils. Uh, so we're in relay chess. Oh, I forgot. Pardon me one second. I'd forgotten I have my crop on my browser on. I have the wrong crop here. We need this crop. Um, furthermore, uh, so this will allow you to see what I'm typing. Furthermore, I need to reduce the size of my browser and increase the size of my chat window to accommodate the remaining empty space here. Um, so move the chat up to right below the window boundary there. Um, apparently, the aspect ratio is locked if I try modifying the chat element. That's kind of annoying. Uh, can I reset my transform here? All right, we'll put the chat window back down. Um, if I remember right, I'm just supposed to increase the height of the chat window uh, from 24 pixels to 72 pixels. There we go. So now that fits. Now I've got my layout set correctly. All right. Well, that wasn't so bad. Um, so, let me think. Um, right, so I was going to go look at, and now you can see what I'm typing socket server utils.js, line 21. Referencing something, column 13 was the error. So name dot starts with um <laughs> okay, I added this comment this to do something better um great, I remember I was having some problems with this code when I was writing that, so those problems have not gone away. I've failed to sweep them under the carpet um I'm gonna need to work my way through this. So, what do I do? Um, let's view... Oh, the same file. Line 143. Game underscore dot white dot name. So that emits... So, somehow a game had been produced um, that did not have a attribute called white, or that had an attribute that was called white. Um, yeah, I wonder what is in this structure, this active games. Because, um, hmm. Yeah, this looks problematic, doesn't it? I forget how this is supposed to work. This is going to take a bit... Oh, hang on. I know how to debug things. Um, so, to debug something, uh, you do this, console.log name. And... I don't remember if JavaScript requires semicolons or not, but if I do something like that, it should be obvious enough to me what's going on here. Uh, three times is probably enough. And we can stop the server, start the server, probably have to log in again. Can I go back and refresh? And log in once more. And ditto for my other user. There you just go to the relay chess site, log in, authorize. Um, 
relay chess to use my Lee Chess account. Seek a new game. There's my new game. Click on it. And we got some zeros. And so now uh, if we view the last few lines of this file. Um, okay, that's not quite enough context. How about the last 400 lines? Okay, so this is the value of the object that uh, is white. So there's my IP address. There's. <laughs> okay. I think my site's GDPR compliant. Uh, so I don't want to know if. Well, I want to take this data structure and turn it into a real game object. Um, so white dot name is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for is that anonymous or not. Um, okay. Let's see, where was the game handler? The socket server dot game dot js? Yeah. And in here we set all the super special stuff. Um, but we somehow did something for anonymous players, which was different, because we didn't have the full data structure for the anonymous player. Um, so what did we do for anonymous? Or did we just not do anything? Uh, grep create game, I think it was. Yeah, create game was actually not in game.js, which would, in my mind, be a logical place to put it. Um, but it's instead invoked from this uh, socket handler.js. Oh, capital create game. You know, because why not capitalize your function names? Um, okay. So, data.loggedInUsers for the value of ID. So, um, let me think about this. <sighs> Let me think. Is there some way I could look at the log and figure out which is which? ID is not user. Um, so there's this concept of logged in users, which includes anonymously logged in users, which is confusing as heck. Um, logged in in socket server all right what how do we log in an anonymous player really that should say like sessions or socket connections or something like that um yeah okay so handle users is what handles the user registration um Okay, so logged in users for anonymous user IDs has an attribute ID and an attribute name, or underscore ID and name. Um, authentication or authorization for non-anonymous users also has an attribute underscore ID. Um, if I remember correctly, and perhaps I do not, Um, the thing that concerns me is that some of these IDs and names could cross each other, um, but so far that hasn't been a problem. 
Um, so now I want to go back to the uh, socket handler. Not this one. Like, this isn't where the create game was defined. Uh, handle seeks. Handle seeks is what called create game. Oh, I see. So this this gets the logged in user as well as user here. Now, why am I passing those instead of just passing the um, IDs of the users? I guess I should look at the contract of um, utils.js, this create thing. Um, so, name is not a name. Also, why does there need to be special handling for... Um, yeah, good gravy. Why does there need to be a special case for the anonymous user? Um, regardless, the fact that this says name uh, is kind of a lie. I'm sorry, no, that the fault is not of calling this here. The fact is we don't need this at all. This get database user by name. Um, Yeah, it's only called in two places, and in those two places, we don't need to call it. Um, because we already have uh, we've already got the user information. Um, so now what confuses me though? You saw that dot name was the parameter that I was passing into uh, get database user by name. Um, I'm starting to think I've got some funkier kind of bug here where the name field actually contains the entire data structure. Um, Again, this is be a case where uh, console.log could clarify what I'm looking at. In fact, why am I implementing all this here? Um, let's see. <sighs> if if my theory is accurate. Um, then I should be able to skip over all of this. I forget how to do things in JavaScript because I never really learned JavaScript. Um, but I think this will work if if I can type 1 equal equal 1. I forget if it's capital true or lowercase true or whatever is equivalent to that. Return name. This isn't really a name. Alright. Stop it. Start it. Bop it. Twist it. Pull it. Yank it. Alright. Refresh it. Log in it. Uh, what editor is this? This is just a VI operating over um, uh, SSH uh, remote login. So I'm just operating on a terminal with just a plain text editor. It's really a poor man's editor. Um, but it should do the job. Alright, so same behavior here. Um, let's see if we grab the last 
so many lines of this log. Should get some idea of here's my data structure. Um, so there's white is go to leisure bot with a title. Um, so my function was attempting to look up a player by ID and do something fancy based on that. Cannot read property title of null. What the hell? Um, handle games 223. So we've got a pretzel that's wrapped around a Rubik's cube that's wrapped around something else here. Um, but I think my theory is right that I was trying to look up a player based on something I've already looked up. So now what? Um, so here's our game creation function, which adds to the games list um, this white based on all these parameters black based on all these parameters and time and increment so all this should resolve right our player object had attributes of name title display name and uh, rating um, so I'm so confused get players from DB and push um, yeah I don't know what's up with the uh, what populates active games I guess I should take a closer look at what populates active games um, but what I wrote is functionally equivalent to doing uh, the following here. Oops, yeah, let's not use copy and paste. Tempting as that may be. And game underscore dot black dot name. So somehow my data structure's fucked. I don't know what's going on. Um, but by simplifying this uh, code base, eventually I should expose the cause of the problem. So now what? Um, public games, I assume. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's the declaration of public games. So that should properly send out notifications and stuff. Assuming that my player object has attributes of name, title, display name, rating. So do we have, um, do I have those attributes here? Name, title, display name, rating. Yeah, I have all four of those. Do I have all four of them here? Yes, I do. All right, cool. So be able to stop this, start it, and experience the same error but with less code. Uh, let's force refresh because why not? I'm going to get a session that's as fresh as possible. Alright, force refresh over here. Log in with Lee Chess. Authorize Relay Chess. Alright, new game. 10 plus 2, accept, all right, and we get our same old problem here, and if I run the log, I should see the same exception, cannot read property title of null. Okay, and so we got a, this is different than the error we had yesterday, not that we were streaming yesterday or anything, but, um, I'm just saying, like, nothing I've changed today is causing this particular error message, so we're going to look at this one now. And we're making progress. Um, handle games.js, line 223. Handle games 
two, two, three. Um, wait, what? White player is equal to get the database user by ID. Now, why am I doing this? Get the player details from the DB, but um, let's see, this is the joined game callback. So there's really no reason to, in fact, you're not going to find the anonymous player um, in the database. But furthermore, the game object already contains all the denormalized values, which maybe should be normalized, but it contains all the denormalized values, so it shouldn't be necessary to look up all this stuff. Um, we just looked at the code that creates this thing. So I should be able to say white is equal to game.white and not need any of that. Uh, likewise for black and game.black. I could be imagining something here, but I think I've got this right. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I should have looked at the line number of the error, but it was 223, right? White player dot title. We'll see. Is this line 223? Yeah. So white player dot title was resolving to null. And now white player dot title won't resolve to null anymore because there's no null to be resolved in that particular manner. Um. Surely there's... oh wait, 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 wait. Updated time. That's an interesting data structure. Um, mm -hmm. So... I'm just going to do... Mm, I don't know that I like this anymore. Um, here. Here's what we're going to do. To disambiguate to the greatest possible extent um, we're going to rely on the use of our local variables until we don't need them anymore. Game.white Game.black So those are white player and black player. So these should be unambiguous at this point. Um, I could probably restore these lines of code that used to be here uh, in terms of explicitly spelling out all the attributes of the player, which were what? Title, display name, rating, and something else. Title, display name, rating, and time? Really? There was an updated time attribute, and I didn't see it there. Okay, so that was the point of, uh, of that particular thing. So I do need this, um, all this stuff here. 248 through 237. That's 12. Oops. Uh, yank 12. And then we're going to drop those 12 lines in here and fix the indentation. Ideally, you would not be doing this over a terminal. Um, but be using some kind of IDE and promoting your changes in a cleaner way. Uh, I just prefer having the direct access to stuff. Alright, so we're going to try this. The difference here um, 
Also, ideally, you'd have an automated test that would somehow execute all this, so you don't have to manually execute it. I don't know how that would work for web development. Um, obviously, there are ways to do it. I just don't know what a reasonable paradigm would be for auto-testing a web application. Um, to what degree that would be... Hey! I got a game. My opponent didn't. <laughs> also, the players are missing. Um, also, I bet you anything there's some kind of error here. And I'm just joking because I don't make wagers like that, but... Um, Alright, so current time is 1341. No error got logged. Okay. So I saw a game board. I didn't see any player attributes here. So the previous error we were encountering was cannot read property title of null. Which I think speaks back to what my original problem was. Um, was that for an anonymous player we need to get something more reasonable than null um, from a given function. So uh, even though this is kind of an abuse of things, um, hmm, you'd think that there would be a player ID somewhere in that white structure. Apparently, for setting up a game, you don't need to know the ID of your opponent. Or it's assumed that the game ID itself is the opponent's ID. Or something like that. I don't know how this is originally written. There's a lot I have to understand about this. What I do understand is I got the nice little notification that my game started. But... Um... Well... Can I inspect the console or something and see, did I have an error? Uh, oh wait, um, play failed because the user didn't interact with the document first. But that's just the audio service. And we did get a noise, which is cool. Um, yeah, I'm confused. So somehow, um, what was earlier failing us was this um, the fact that this would return a null value when we said uh, get the database user by ID. That was problematic. Um, and that it could find nothing and return null. Um, so what do I do for an anonymous user? Obviously we need to return something um, in order to be able to construct our game object or our game object constructor needs to do something more clever. Um, if, and this is not the way I should be doing it either, user equals equals null triple equals null? I don't know. One of these things. Um, yeah, so we don't need this other function anymore, I'm pretty sure. Oops, I got rid of the code I was going to use. So there's my condition. Um, that's what I was trying to do. Uh, is by name still referenced somewhere? Yeah, it doesn't need to be because we've already looked up the player. Um, now, why don't I stick one more attribute in this structure? Hmm. Because apparently somehow uh, I can understand why the previous developer didn't want to have more attributes than necessary, but in my mind, um, 
having ID values floating around can only help me as I struggle to sort out this shit. So, um, ID of well, yeah, you just use the provided parameter and call that the ID value or this might be a case where a null ID might be appropriate so we can best differentiate between well no we still need the identity of the anonymous user so we don't send notifications to all the anonymous users every time a game uh, move is played um, now there's a good chance that what I just coded doesn't run it seems to run it seems to have deployed fine Right, force refresh. Uh, let's go back. Maybe I can get both of these windows open to help expedite my testing. Okay, did the force refresh. Did I log in here again? I don't remember. We're going to do it again, because why not? Um... At some point, I wonder if uh, LeechS is going to rate limit the fact that I'm trying to uh, authorize Relay Chess. All right, so I didn't hear a game start noise that time. Um, also, my timer didn't get a value set. Uh, tail last 40 lines or so. Tells me what? What did I learn this time? Cannot read property title of null. Now, I'm confused. Uh, JavaScript null check. There's got to be a way to test for a null value. Namely, I want to check if a value is null not if it's not, 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 null. Um, so, how do I check if a value is null? Oh, I think exclamation point variable is a way to check if it's null. Triple equals null works. I'm not sure if double equals works, but triple equals seems to be, um, yeah. So I confused myself. I've got an extra terminal open just to make things further confusing. Sorry, didn't mean to catch you off guard with that. Rep equal equals null, wherever the heck I put it. Oh. Oh my. But I've been just, I just learned that um, the triple equals operator is what I should be using for a null comparison. Not that you should ever have to rely on things being null, but um, double equals null is now triple equals null. Uh, next. Find replace next. Ideally, you'd have a said pattern that would just auto find and re auto replace. Uh, okay. And now, if we look here, we got triple equals null all over the place. Oh. Um, except in utils.js, I didn't yet take care of that. And now it's taken care of. And yeah. All right, we'll stop and start and redo the test. Force refresh here. Go back and to the lobby and we're gonna log in with Lee Chess. Authorize Relay Chess. Log in with Lee Chess again. Uh, authorize Relay Chess. Okay, 
new game, 10-2, accept, and I'm still missing my game timer. And if I check my log, now what happened? Cannot read property title of null. All right, and this is again at socket server handle games that js uh, hit apostrophe toward the end just to make things exciting. That's just me missing my enter key. So white player is null. White player is the thing that we looked up this way. Um, so get database user by ID yielded a null value despite the fact that I just changed that very function um, to never return a null value. Like, last I checked, this is not null. Um, hmm. So, unless there's two of these, 223, right? This is the value of white player. White player is what you get when you get database user by ID uh, as defined by utils.js. Um, so, yeah, now that's definitely a function of the socket server. What have I messed up here? Somehow this function is returning null. A function can't return twice, right? I mean, assuming it can, then I want this to happen instead of returning on the second return statement. but. I thought return would return out of a function. Yeah, I just looked it up. Um, triple equals was recommended by Stack Overflow. JavaScript null equals. Not that I should ever need to check if a thing is null, but um, let's see. <laughs> Here's an example from jQuery source code. Um, so no, I had it right the first time. The guy who posted the thing on Stack Overflow had it wrong. Go figure. Assuming I'm to trust this website. Um, I'm not sure if I am. Which equals operator should be used? Um, the identity operator behaves identically to the quality operator minus type conversion and the types must be the same to be considered equal uh, yeah we're doing some serious stack overflow this is like half of software development hobby projects is just looking at Stack Overflow and copying stuff. Um, if you're doing things for work, you likely have a better understanding of what you're doing than if you're just playing around with code just for hobby. Um, or just as a hobby. So the equality operator will compare for quality after doing necessary type conversions. Um, so is this to say that it doesn't matter? Uh, false equal null is false. <laughs> Never use the evil twins. Always use triple equals and not double equals. Uh, update. Well, okay, so we see double equals. Um, 
is more than adequate. According to this person, according to Bill the Lizard. Um, thanks, Bill the Lizard, for this wonderful information that double equals is sufficient, so I don't need to do triple equals. That said, changing it back to double equals will still expose the same problem we just had a minute ago. Um, so when I go back into socket server game.js, go find our triple equal operator and change it back, and then into handle games and handle users, So there's our triple equal operator. Next. Okay, there's our triple equal operator. I've changed it back. It's not going to fix anything. Um, looks like triple equals is right. The identity operator is right. Because you want a polymorphic comparison. Really, um, all I care... I mean, I might be thinking about this incorrectly. I didn't write, um, I didn't write the MongoDB driver, this find one function. I really don't care what it returns. Um, I just care that if I don't find the user, um, that this function returns something sensible. That said, I really shouldn't need to call this function in the first place if I somehow know that my user is anonymous. Um, but I don't think the way this is currently written gives me the ability to know whether a user is anonymous or not. That all said, like if I'd written this from scratch, I would have no anonymous users. That would be a version 2 feature. Or version 1.1 or 1.2 or 2 or whatever. That wouldn't be something we would have as a feature at launch time. I would just focus on getting authenticated user play going first. And then worry about the fringe condition about somebody wanting to use the site. Um, but not wanting to log in for some reason. But the code was written. I didn't have to write most of this. Just the trade-off is that I have to deal with all the bugs I introduce as I touch anything. So again, our timer didn't get filled in. Again, like it, we've tried it both ways at this point. Um, with the double equal, the equality operator, we tried it with the identity operator, triple equals. Both ways we get the same error message that uh, handle games is returning a null value. Uh, I'm sorry, no, that the utils class attempting to look up, um, well, undefined. Now that's another problem. Is like I shouldn't have been attempting to do a user lookup based on a value called undefined, right? So I think. I think I screwed up earlier somewhere. And so let's handle one things handle things one at a time here. Um so handle games.js 223 is where our error is occurring. By the way, this is this source code is all published on GitHub. Uh, search for relay chess should not be too hard to find. If you have brilliant ideas to how to fix the code, I would gladly accept a pull request fixing it. Uh, as long as you understand that I am going to test that and make sure it works before I merge it. Um, so whiteplayer.title is null because here we're attempting to do game.white.id um, So we're attempting to look up based on a value of undefined. So I think I want to try to define game.white.underscore.id. 
So this is the callback function. Um, I think the game is created by handle seeks.js, which tries to, let's see, answer seek. Um, does this not, no. Um, grep white in all these JS files. Of course, this is too much information. Somewhere in here, something creates the game. Um, so if you have a timeout, this is what the data structure looks like. Here is the thing I was looking for. Apparently it's in utils.js. I didn't think it was there. This organization, this might be subject to improvement at some point. Emit active games. So, so had this had this created um, everything, then it should. Oh, there's one typo here to start with. Um, that might have something to do with it. I had white player instead of black player. That was something I introduced today, so it's not the fault of our original developer. Um, but I'm not sure if that's going to fix everything. It might help. So this public games is an array that's constructed inside emit active games. Um, somehow this data structure of white gets populated, um, which happens to have like all these attributes in it, name and title and display name and rating. Um, and I need to find what's initializing that data structure in the first place because I want to do something more creative with it. Um, so is there anywhere that we set um, display name but don't set ID? So instead of searching for white, which is used all over the place, let's set display name. Uh, so it's just in handle games, handle users, and utils.js. Those are the three things I need to look at. Uh, let's look at handle users, because we haven't looked at that in a while. Um, so display name. OK, so this. Handle users generates an anonymous users identifier for the purposes of future requests with that same user IP address and so forth. I don't know all the specifics of it, but as long as we're setting this attribute ID in all the cases where we're setting display name, then ID should never be null or undefined. Um, unless somehow unthinkable happens and I don't know. Um, um, underscore ID in socket server. So, oh, in fact, why don't I search not for that? Let's search for, these are all the places that we set an ID. Um, so it looks like utils.js in one case sets underscore ID to the value of ID. Um, and if I want a line number, the line number is 19. Um, I'm just curious, could that ever result in this getting a value of undefined here. Um, well, yeah, garbage in, garbage out. All right, well, let's tackle these things one at a time. For my logged, in fact, both of my users are logged in. Um, I'm going to get flustered by what's going to happen next, but let's stop and start this because I did fix the typo.
there is some potential that somehow something could maybe behave differently than it's currently behaving. It's not going to be any different, but we need to do the experiment anyway, because I don't understand the code well enough to uh, use analytical methods to figure out whether or not it would do what it should have been doing. So further confounding this is that the games are stored in the database, so there's a potential that um, all this code could be working if your database contains sane data. So there's that. Um, all right, so what was our error this time around? It's altogether possible that I'm trying to restore from a game that's invalid. Um, so let's explore that possibility. Um, that is to say, let's go back to the lobby, force refresh here, back to lobby, force refresh there. And so I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm no longer in the game, although I see there is one game in play. Hmm. All right, we're going to stop the service. Mongo, Relay, Chess, and see if I can remember anything about how MongoDB works. I think show collections is a command. Uh, Game.find, db.game.find. All right. You can hear the faint music in the background. Sorry if that's been running the whole time. I don't know if it was or not. Uh, db.game.find um, subject to criteria white is me? No. White is capital me? Okay. Um, geez. How... Why does not the attribute I want to be looking on, is it? Here, let's try something different. Time of 10. Alright, so I don't think there have been very many 10-2 games on the site, although apparently I'm mistaken. Wonderful. Um, is there a created at attribute? A date of creation of the game. I'm just trying to find out, um, are there games which have no moves? PGN of empty string should be sufficient. So I think that's to say that there are no games with an empty PGN string. Um, I think that satisfies my curiosity. Um, unless, hmm, is there a way to search a collection for uh, a missing attribute? Uh, so I want to search for Mongo collection missing attribute. There's a, um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, missing key. If you want, if value is always present, you can try this command. Um, hmm, hmm. Wait, what? That's the opposite of what I'm trying to do. Find embedded element missing a key. I don't even care if it's embedded or not. I just want an element that's missing a key. Um, oh, exists, false. Okay, let's try that. 
PGN exists false. All right, there aren't any for which PGN does not exist. That's to say, I'm not dealing with bum data, as far as I know. Um, okay, so what do I do next? I think I've identified at least that um, I'm not dealing with bum data and that my exception I'm getting up here that uh, we have a null ID for which we're trying to get the title. <sighs> I'm so confused. Why is everything completely backwards? Uh, so we're just trying to create a game, right? Except that's not in handle users. Handle users just has the delegate for or the callback for notifying the players once a game has been created. But the actual game creation, no, it's not done in there. It's done in handle seeks. Yeah. Create game random. So, create game random is taking the ID of the logged in user, uh, user object. What's this user object? Um, this user is the user accepting the request, if I remember right. Yes, yeah, so ID is the seek ID, which happens to be the same as the ID of the person who created the seek. Uh, if that exists, then we're going to... Where did user come from? Uh, user is... Um, the server user by socket, which I think also is a fully formed user identifier. Um, so the socket is the socket of the player that's accepting the seek. So between this and that, we should have identified everything that's necessary to create a game. And the rest is just a formality. Let's change directory into socket server. Uh, create game is defined where? Game.js? Yeah. Create game random. All right. Yeah, this isn't actually seeded, so create game random does not randomly assign colors, although it should. It just isn't working correctly for some reason. Although maybe it'll work. I don't know. Um. Wait. So I'm logging these attributes: white, black, time, increment, rated. Um, now I have to go up a level to run my scripts. Uh, so, create game, object, object, 10 plus 2, false. Object is really not super descriptive. Uh, I don't know how to introspect an object in JavaScript. Like, that really is not descriptive. I guess those are anonymous objects which could be pretty printed if I so knew how to print them. Um, JavaScript object to string. Is there a pretty way to format them? JSON.stringify object. Well, you know, if I've got visibility to JSON there, um, that would do it. Does my function even have visibility to JSON? Mm, I don't think it does. I could import the proper library to do it, but yeah. All right, so so we looked at create game random. 
create game random calls create game. Create game calls new game, game being a lower lowercase uh, class. I don't know if that's a standard or not. Um, what I do know is that here I am failing to set the ID attribute of players. Um, so let me just, for laughs, set um, the ID of each of the players equal to the value of white and black. That's not going to help, is it? Hmm. If I could just unpack this, maybe I'd have some idea what's in it. Um, but I assume it does have an ID attribute. Um, I assume that's going to be sufficient. Um, hang on. Do these things have attributes of name or display name or what? Because I know in some cases it's called display name. I don't know if what's being passed in has an attribute of name or an attribute of display name. Console.log white dot underscore ID. And we're going to log a couple more things because we're here. We're going to log name and display name. And it'll give me some insight as to what it is that I'm doing. So I've already stopped the service. Um, and restart the service. And now the service has been started. We're going to log in once more authorize Lee Chess to inform Relay Chess who we are, or rather that we have granted a role um, that allows a player to construct a game based on their Lee Chess information. Oh, thank God. At least for one of the players, this did what it was supposed to do. <sighs> okay. So I've made tons of changes here locally. Oh, the game does auto-abort. That's comforting to know. All right. Still, um, okay. So now what? Um, we should check the log and see what happened. My head is spinning trying to follow all the stuff that's going on here. So I logged a whole bunch of things after the game got created. So, bot, bot, bot. So name and display name were both set. Um, okay. Um, it's interesting that... Well, no, it's not. It really isn't. So there's been a lot of confusion because I went in and added this attribute ID. Um... Where in many places where there was an attribute that was already called name. Uh, and the reason I did that is, well, so that I'd have a reliable attribute that I understand in an object that I would have full control of, um, and then I could later re-examine whether it's necessary or unnecessary to have both attributes. I'm still not at a phase where I can do that assessment because the code doesn't work yet. Uh, even though the one player saw everything just fine, the opponent got gobbledygook on their screen. It's a very formal term. Um, so uh, I'm going to look in my second screen and see what the hell happened. Um, Okay, no errors logged. How could there be no errors logged if the page didn't do what it was supposed to do? Um, I don't know. Could be a browser difference issue. Maybe this only works in Chrome. 
uh, maybe the fact that I have this trying to use this in Internet Explorer could be the issue. I only picked Internet Explorer there because my Chrome had already logged in with uh, the same username here. Um, let me try this a different way. So, so far we've been just engaging a single test of um, on the second screen I've created the game. On this screen um, I've been accepting the seek. Let's turn that paradigm on its head and see. Okay, yeah, this could just... No. This still can't be attributed to the browser because we still got the same pairings. Um, yeah, so what now is the key question. Uh, we could take a look at what we've changed. Let's get a better assessment of this stuff. So some of that's just changing the domain name, which is hard-coded. Really, it's the socket server changes that need to be considered in more detail, um, which are, uh, well, I don't need that logging there. But yeah, when we construct uh, when we construct a game, we set the attributes, uh, the white ID, the white name, etc. Um, we're really logging a lot more information, which is starting to clutter the log file and make it tricky to investigate what's going on. So those attributes are set. Um, let's take another look at the log and see. Can we figure out what happened? Game started, game aborted. I'm curious whether separate messages go out to both players for the accept, seek, and create game um, actions. Because one player sees this from the perspective of, I just accepted this seek here. The other player sees this from the perspective of somebody just accepted a seek and I'm going to be drawn into a game um, based upon that. I'm not sure if it matters. That sort of thing. But um, Var P1 is white. Math at random is less than a half. Um, not totally sure what's going on there. Um, I could take a brief digression. I was just so I don't like lose my mind looking at the same thing all day. Uh, Math.random. Oh, yeah, it is bounded by 0 and 1. So, yeah, that, in theory that should work. Um, So what more is there to look at? Um, module exports as game, and that's the rest of game.js. Handle seeks defines exports for uh, submitting a new seek uh, for a player answering a seek. Now, it doesn't seem to matter which role is which either. Now that I think about it, this could be completely unrelated to what I'm trying to test. Um, I guess the only way I can know what the problem is is to try um, going to log out of Leeches in Chrome. I'm sorry, in Firefox here. That's still not good enough. Uh, let me open up another browser on the same computer, uh, org, and we'll try, um, if I can remember what it was, something like that maybe, okay. 
and then go to relaychess.moo.com log in with Lee Chess here I'm gonna run the same experiment all from one machine hopefully the fact that it's the same machine isn't gonna pose any technical difficulties here new game 10 2 uh, accept this game okay I get white um, Oh, well, maybe it was just some problem with my other computer or something. Or other device. Um, yeah, no, we got a game on our hands. I don't even know what changed. I'd take credit if I could. Taking credit is simply not possible here, so... Apparently, somehow I got this code into a steady enough state that I can play a game. Um, next task. Um, should I choose to accept it? Is... Um, well, we got to figure out how to get um, this code checked in and usable by other people. So is this mate? This looks very matey. Nice. Beautiful. I don't even know if that was rated or casual or whatever. Um, yeah, it looks like that was just casual. I don't even know what it's going to take to get rated play back up and running, but got something that runs. So, I've been developing the, all this on the production site. The reality is, is, whoops, now we got the song running in the background? Alright, so, reality is, I can't just, like, push code from the production site um, to my repository. I need to make these changes locally and test them out and whatever that's what I should have been doing is had a test site available and then test things on the test site, move it to the staging site, test it on the staging site, then move it to the production site and verify it. Not that you would do testing in production, but just verify that it deployed properly. Um, and the easiest way to verify that would be to play a game in production. But since I'm using the same environment for development, staging, testing, etc., um, my workflow is more than a bit bamboozled here. Uh, so, I'm just going to make these same changes on my dev server, minus all the console logging stuff. So, socket server, game.js. Uh, we're change directory to socket server, vim game.js. And. Wait. So I changed where it says white, change that to white ID in white name. Likewise here where it said name black, I changed that to uh, black dot ID and black dot name. Uh, what else did I have to change? Uh, I changed utils.js, got rid of that dumb function, which um, was doing something undesirable. Um, so we got rid of this, find the user that way. Um, I still maintain that there's a better way to do this. That's how I checked it, right? If user double equals null, then... I mean, yeah, I could return here. Yeah, fine. We'll leave the return statement in there, because that seemed to work for some previous version of the code. Um, then I had to go to line 140 in that same file. I didn't have to. 
Um, well, no, I did. I did have to go here because I undefined a function name, and this is just game underscore dot white dot name. Game dot white dot name. Don't know why this works, but it does. Uh, game dot black dot name it has all these fancy attributes in it. And when we're creating these things, I'm making sure that we set these ID attributes so we can tie these things back to database players. Now, one regression test I still have yet to run is have I broken anonymous player play by allowing authenticated players to play rated games? The answer is probably. It wouldn't surprise me if there's a regression here somewhere. Um, okay, so I've git diff local directory. Yeah, those are the same changes. I don't have a really good way to locally... I mean, at one point I had good way to locally run and test all this. But it's an enormous hassle to set up, so I'm just going to push the changes. Um, this is a project that has no budget. Um, or rather, it has a budget of zero dollars, zero cents. Um, so I'm just going to push the thing and see if it works. Because I don't have the front end to test this, my system service is not there. Um, well, I could see, let's run this serviceless, right? I could at least attempt to run Node if it's still installed and up and running, although I recently upgraded my OS and lost a lot of packages. Um, yeah, I don't have Node locally installed, so... Um, I'm just going to trust that I got this right. And if I got it wrong, the commit history will show what I fucked up. Um, oh, actually... Uh, yeah, what I should do is create a test branch. What we're going to do here is create a test branch. Get checkout branch test. Commit... Um, refactor game creation uh, logged in wait no authorized player game creation cool get remote should list yeah uh, can push test and we've pushed test, and it's beautiful. And unfortunately, um, oh, something else changed. What the fuck else changed here? Um, so we've got stuff in app.js changed. Oh, wait, no. This is not going to matter. Because um, uh, I can say git fetch origin, git checkout test, and the changes are on separate files, so I can check out the test branch and hot deploy it. Um, now, of course, we have to go retest stuff because I redeployed the site I'm using production for testing because I don't have a test environment set up. Uh, so let's do that. Log in with leeches on secondary, log in with leeches on primary. Uh, new game, 10.2, accept. Nice. Player randomization evidently is not there. Um, but that aside, this is beautiful. Um, is there an efficient way for me to 
checkmate my opponent. Gosh, I wish. Boop. Alright, so I want to cut the king off from the rest of his army. Otherwise, he'll be able to run away. So let's plug that in the way. And then this is yeah. mate. Nice. Alright. So my test branch evidently is good enough. It's certainly forward progress. Uh, the regression test is once players have logged out, I don't have a way for them to log out yet, but once they've logged out, does the site still support um, anonymous user play is the next question. Okay, but I think we'll save that question for another day. We should address it right now, but this is, again, a hobby project, and there is a way for people to play on the site. You hit the login button. So let me complete my development here. Get check out. Oh. Uh, master. Get merge test. Um, get log will indicate the message, which is cool. Get push origin master, which is beautiful. All right, that all works as it should. Stop the site. Get check out master, get pull, looks up my latest changes, get branch, delete, um, uh, test. Uh, actually, what I should be checking out is origin slash master, because I don't intend to do local development here. Um, get branch, delete local development branch for master. All right, so, and then we can start the site back up and verify that it is in fact running. And then since we verified that, um, let's see, get branch, delete test. And there's one last place I should go to delete um, the test branch, and that's on the actual uh, intermediary server, um, or repository here. Um, that's not what I was looking for. I'm looking for... Here we go. Here we go. Branch and test are, in fact, in sync here. And what I want to do is uh, I don't need the test branch anymore because the um, master branch now has the test merged into it. That's to say that we've staged it. I should have called it stage. Whatever. Good enough. Um, so this is the same code we had a minute ago. Um, I need to verify it deployed properly. We're going to do a bit of a different test here just for that sake. Let's play the computer. Level 1. This is just running in JavaScript. It has no dependency on the server. So there should be no challenges running this. No potential challenges running this. Just like Everything about this should be happy, fun time. Check. Um, minus the fact that I'm going to get pwned. Okay. You win, computer. It works. So, yeah. I think that was a valuable uh, development session here. Um, is up and running. Uh, you've I used this as a system uh, system D monitored process. So uh, as long as I'm not logging overly much, it'd still be useful for me to log something other than object object here. Uh, I could log the IDs of the players or something like that. But yeah, we got some useful logging. We've gotten um, ability to create games and 
They are unrated as of yet because I have not done enough testing to turn on uh, Glico 2 rating. Um, I have ideas in mind for how best to do that rating and it's going to be really super complicated but one thing at a time. So um, that said I guess I should complete this test by losing a game, right? Alright, how do I expose my king badly enough to lose a game? Here, just take my stuff, will ya? Um. Check. That's a beautiful check. check. That's also a beautiful check. check. That's check. check. You're gonna keep checking check. me. Ah, uh, right. We don't have a checkmate noise. Um, but no, that's checkmate. So spiffy. Um, actually we do have a checkmate noise, I just haven't applied it to this, um, playing against the machine. Nor is there a take back button or a move list here. So a lot of features I do want to add, but, um, yeah. At least now you can navigate, do I have at least the link for the site here? Yeah, there it is. Well done, bot. That was the other thing I got running lately, was my bot. So, um, mission accomplished. Alright, um, yeah, hopefully uh, it'll still be stable. Feel free to test it. If there are bugs, please let me know. Um, it's been exciting. Um, Really the most exciting part of this project for me, other than being able to play on the site, and it is a great variant, the most exciting part was getting the login with Lee Chess going. So you don't even have to like create a separate user account or anything anymore. You can just go here, click on the button, and if you have a Lee Chess account, uh, you can authorize Relay Chess to know what your Lee Chess name is. So you could use that same name here. Um, so, is the site GDPR compliant? I would say to the greatest extent possible for an amateur project, um, although I will work on it, because uh, ultimately we do want people from everywhere to be able to play, not just people located in the US. We want everybody to be able to use the site. So to that end, um, I do need two things to work here. Um, one is the concept that if you had any personal information, for example, a title, I guess, could be considered personal information. Although, arguably, it's also public information, so it really isn't that personal. I don't know. I mean, it's easily looked up, but I need a way to maybe be able to scrub the title. I, I have to think more about that. Um, but to... There needs to be a log out button. Um, it is true if you navigate away from the site, the site won't show that you're online anymore. So, for example, if I just navigate away with uh, Godel there, it's no longer online. Um, but people want to be able to safely log out of the site. Um, so that's something I'm going to need to work on. Um, but yeah, two, if there is identifying information, then I'll need to figure out a way to be GDPR compliant with respect to that information. Although, I assume I already am, I don't know. Um, I don't retain emails, I don't retain people's names or anything like that. I'm lucky just to be able to get the Lee Chess usernames straight and differentiate that from an anonymous user. Um, but yeah, the next big step here would be getting a logout button working and making sure that there's nothing still around which requires an email. Um, since the site has moved, uh, the URL is still the same. The IP address is different because it's hosted by OVH. And uh, in the host, when we deployed this to the cloud on affordable cloud, whatever it's called, um, within OVH. They had a really awesome deal for a single core machine that 
it's pretty bare bones. It's the same machine that is running my Go to Lesher bot on Leechess. So the same resources are going to be directed toward running this server as running just a copy of Stockfish. Um, that all said, I don't anticipate any trouble. If there is trouble, we'll figure it out. Might need to dial back the Stockfish a bit and make it only like play Ultra Bullet or something if there is a challenge. But my point that I was trying to say is that um, since I moved the site physically from my machine onto the OVH machine, there are no email addresses or anything in the database. I've it's a completely new instance, has new player ratings, and um, we see everybody, myself included, is still rated 1500. Because I haven't figured out what yet to do in terms of getting rated games back up and running and reliable. But gameplay should be working, which is exciting. And to all my loyal viewers who are hanging out here, um, or those who check the VOD, I'll uh, say you could that those who are so enthusiastic about Bug House and insist that Leech Us must have Bug House, I recommend this approach. That you make a site that plays Bug House and just has a simple button that says click here to log in with Leech Us. Um, and that would be fantastic. Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for being the loyal viewer here. I know I've been ranting the whole time. Um, but yeah, that's the big secret, is that, you know, anybody can make a bug house site, have it use Leechess usernames and titles and stuff. Um, and you don't have to make your own, like, email server, and you don't have to do your own password management, and... You can use uh, open authorization, and if you want to see a way to do it, by all means, look at this code base. It is published on GitHub. You, again, just search for the name RelayChess. So I'm going to be recommending that in the future, now that this site actually has working logins and working ability to play games. It's a replicable model for Bughouse. Not saying that this site actually plays Bughouse, Although, you know, maybe I'll add Bug House in the future. We can have Bug House Relay Chess. How mad would that be? No, I'm not doing that. Just kidding. But um, if I were to scrap the site and rewrite it in another language, um, that would be something I'd be interested in pursuing would be Bug House. But, um, yeah, as just some it's not feasible to take this code base and do something that advanced with it. But if somebody were to like, I don't know, I, I could take a look at um, what Leech S user Nerifon once did with their bug house server. I have no way to be able to host something as intense as that. But I could at least look at the development. And, no, actually I did look at that once. I saw that really Bringing that up to speed with the latest uh, Leech S code base is not feasible. So you'd need to start with the le latest Leech S code base and fork it and add bug house support and add support for uh, Leech S based login. Um, but I don't think that ever got off the ground because people didn't want to re register. It was inconvenient and it was difficult to find the bug house test site. Um, but yeah, this is a model that can be followed for people who are super interested in a given variant. I think chess.com might follow this kind of model when they purchased or acquired or whatever they did with Hello Chess um, to make their four-player chess game. Um, I think they use a similar model as to what I did here, even though this is on a different domain as the Lee Chess site. Um, I think um, chess.com put a similar firewall or something in place separating their normal play zone from their four player play zone because four player doesn't scale the same way that normal chess does. Anyway, I'm saying like if people want to make any variant, they could make literally any variant. They could just follow this model. They could even clone this code base if they wanted to. 
though I can't imagine why. Other than this is a working model. It's beautiful. It does work. Um, we have the community section coming soon. I should update this documentation, like put in a trademark or something interesting on this page. We do have rules, so pieces um, move the same way as the pieces that protect them. The exception to that rule is that pawns cannot inherit special movement abilities, nor can they convey special movement abilities. Castling is only permitted by the king and the rook, and you execute it by putting the king on top of the rook. Other rules of chess are observed. Including stalemate, by the way. It's a fun little rule. And we do have a Discord server. Um, I'm not in control of that server, so I should probably update that to my Discord, if I had to guess. Unless, uh, yeah. Oh, hi, welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, Relay Chess had gone offline quite a while ago, and uh, the reason for that is because we didn't want to pay for server costs, and I wasn't going to pay for it while the server was still holding like user emails and encrypted passwords and stuff. Um, so I wasn't willing to host it at that point. Now I am hosting it because it is using Lee Chess based authentication or not authentication. Authentication would be if it could identify your authenticity as to who you are. All it cares is that it's using Leechus authorization. There is no Leechus authentication. There's just Leechus authorization where you click on the login and it just prompts you, um, hey, we're on Leechus now. Are you going to authorize Relay Chess to look at your public profile information. Well, yeah, it's all public information anyway. And that's how um, we authorize uh, Relay Chess to um, be able to play with your Lee Chess username. You've granted this website, which I am hosting, uh, actually in OVH. Um, and you've authorized this website to be able to look at your public information on Lee Chess, which is like the least permissive authorization ever. And I'm not sure I'd ever escalate that to any higher permission. One thing it does look at is what's your Lee Chess user title. And I need a way to keep that title up to date, which I've not done yet either. So um, the original developer was thinking that like adding all kinds of chat features would be necessary for version one of the site. I kept pushing back saying, let's look at this Discord thing. And yeah, really, Discord is the place where we can discuss uh, Relay Chess best. But um, I'm not in charge of that Discord, so maybe I should update that to point to my thing. Although my thing is quite overwhelmed by Git messages at the moment from all the Stockfish development I'm doing. So what can you do? Anyhow, um, yeah. Feel free to test this out. Again, the URL. I'll publish the URL. Um, I'll probably regret publishing it, but I'll put that URL maybe in the Lee Chess forums. I could put it in the Lee Chess Discord, but like if there are too many people trying to use it and they all find all kinds of bugs, I'm not going to be able to react in time. Um... But yeah, I think at least for logged in players, you can play unrated games at present. And I'll just have to worry about bringing other features back one by one. One thing I do want to, yeah, two things I need to do next are, um, I get the log out button and have that work and, um, fix normalization of things so that like, my database doesn't get flooded with all kinds of information that doesn't need to be there. Like, I need to start repaying some of the technical debt I incurred from the migration from our homegrown authentication system, um, which uses emails and passwords, to leech us authorization system. Um, so now we have all these attributes, which are an ID, a display name, a name, 
a leechus username, a session ID, a leechus session ID. There's all kinds of attributes here. I need to simplify that model um, into something much more refined so that um, the site doesn't creak and start stuttering, um, but scales better as new features are introduced. Either way, the original developer original developer was quite excited to see that I had done something with this. Um, and I was I'm still very grateful um, to Debo for his assistance getting the last the most crucial parts of the authorization working. He was looking for some sample application some uh, developer who was very interested in being able to use leechus authorization as it was being rolled out i gladly volunteered my site um, my my copy or repository of this project and that's how i got to be hosting this site um, i went ahead and created the um, the machine on the OVH server. Uh, so I'm paying its trivial monthly fees for it to be hosted out here. Um, if there are problems with it, I'll see what I can do about it. Um, but I don't anticipate there being problems. They had an excellent deal for, well, yeah, single core machine with very limited memory and very limited capability. But it's more than just like capable of holding websites that are made by front page. Um, OVH does a great job with their services in general. And so yeah, it's kind of like a DIY solution for um, hosting stuff. So as long as you're willing to do everything other than provision the hardware and provision the trivial operating system to go upon it, as long as you do all the system admin work, um, and all the application development and all that sort of stuff. As long as that's all on you to administrate the machine, they'll provide the hardware, the electricity, and a trivial version of any OS to go on it. Um, so that's how I got involved in administrating this site. Um, but yeah, I think I've ranted long enough here. So, um, that all said, thanks to everybody for watching. It's been good fun here. I'm going to host up, I think our friend Andy Boing is still going here. Let me verify that. Yeah, he's definitely going. All right, yeah, we're going to host him. If I can remember to leave open my chat window long enough for me to perform such an operation. Anyhow, yeah, thanks for watching. It's been fun, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Uh, have a good day, night, or whatever time of day it is over there. Yeah, see you next time.